The perimeters there are the 210 freeway on the north, the Foothill freeway, the Golden State freeway on the south, Sunland Boulevard on the east, and the 118 freeway on the west. Now, once again, all streets leading into those areas are closed off now. That's central Los Angeles, south central Los Angeles, and the area of Sunland out in, uh, out in the valley, out where uh, this incident first started 14 months ago. And they will remain shut down until further notice. So that's a large area of the city cordoned off now. Uh, officials can't say, as you, can, uh, as you can imagine, if that's going to include tomorrow morning's rush hour traffic. So we're going to have to keep you posted on that because that could really, really be a mess. But you know, a lot of those areas, uh, there are not going to be jobs for people to drive to anyway. Well, unfortunately, that's back to uh, Fresnel Chapman in the Crenshaw District and see what's going on out there. Fresnel. Well, once again, as I have been reporting to you over the last couple of hours, there is a major fire, and it continues to burn out of control. Now, you talk about looting. We've got some of that on tape. Really sad, a sad sight to see and a very ugly sight to see. This is in uh, south-central Los Angeles, the vicinity of 84th and Vermont. Taped a little bit earlier by Laurel Erickson and her cameraman, Lou Zapata. Well, uh, they, this is where they torch. This is, I think, in the downtown area. They've torched some palm trees. Of course, they did this all over the place, so that doesn't necessarily mean it's the same one. But um, the tape we saw earlier, they taped four different palm trees along the freeway, and the individual who did it didn't seem to mind that we were there watching it. We've Kelly got and Patrick. John, yes. There had been some hope uh, several hours ago that the pace of the night, the pace of the emergencies was slowing down. But we have to tell you, here at the uh, Command Dispatch Center for both LAPD and the L.A. Fire Department, it has been regular. Every five to ten minutes, there's been another convoy of units, fire companies, paramedics, always accompanied by police metro units going out with we them. We will now join the our owned and operated station in Los Angeles, KNBC, which has extended its evening broadcast in continuing coverage of the story. And, um, and almost all the other fires, we have seen people uh, gathered around, the people on the streets, but it appears as though it's now uh, a quarter to two in the morning, but it appears as though the streets are now emptying out. Is that correct, downtown? Well, I wouldn't say that it's, a, that it's a mob scene down here by any chance, but I just looking across the street, I could probably see maybe 100, 150 people, like you said, just standing around watching things happening here. No, and indeed, uh, demonstrations are being held uh, throughout the state. Uh, early today in San Jose and Palo Alto, demonstrations in response to the acquittal. Uh, police in San Jose report a group of demonstrators marched through downtown streets and rallied outside San Jose City Hall and police station. Police say there are unconfirmed reports of broken windows. There does not appear to be any apparent looting in San Jose, and this was as of 1 o'clock this morning. A police spokeswoman says she believes the marchers came from earlier demonstrations of about 100 students at San, o San Jose State. In Palo Alto, about 100 Stanford students holding a candlelight demonstration at this hour outside Palo Alto City Hall. All this a response to the decision in Simi Valley. Uh, if you've been watching us, you may know that uh, a couple of hours ago, the governor came on, Governor Wilson, and uh, talked about what kind of support we would actually get from the state. Something like 750 CHP officers are now available. Most of them will come from the Southern California area, although, if needed, uh, those up north will be available. And the verdict on the streets of Los Angeles. This is Daybreak with Patrick Greenlaw and Kathy Marshall. News, weather, and sports every 15 minutes. Good morning. The latest reports are that three people have been killed in Los Angeles in a night of rioting. The violence followed not guilty verdicts on nearly all counts in the videotaped police beating of a black motorist. Angry mobs roamed the city, burning buildings, looting, and beating white motorists. At least 40 fires were set. And at least 108 people were injured, including one firefighter hit by a sniper's bullet. At least 25 people were arrested. And the Rapid Transit District suspended bus service after four drivers and a passenger were injured. That was a scene uh, just hours ago. For the very latest right now, let's check in with CNN's Ann McDermott. She joins us live from Los Angeles with the very latest. Ann? Well, the smell of smoke is everywhere this morning, but things seem to be calming down somewhat. However, there are still a lot of fires. In some cases throughout the evening, fires were burning out of control. This was partly because in some cases there simply were not enough firefighters to get to them. And in other cases, it was simply too dangerous to fire for firefighters to approach. 
In fact, one firefighter was injured. He was uh, shot in the cheek. He is said to be in pretty good condition. We are now hearing that uh, there are five people dead, more than 100 wounded. Some of these wounded are gunshot wounds. There have been isolated instances of sniper firing. And also some people have been pulled from cars and trucks, taken from their vehicles, and beaten. There have been pockets of looting this evening, throughout the evening, occasionally in full view of the television cameras. It does not seem to have inhibited some people. Also, besides the looting, there have been some damage to a lot of stores, uh, and in some cases, they have been torched. But even uh, looters, it seems, get tired. That seems to be the case now, but police officers are still on tactical full alert. Planes have had to be rerouted as they made their approach to Los Angeles International Airport. This is because the smoke was just too heavy for uh, some of the pilots to see. Schools in some areas will be closed this evening. There is going to be a curfew this evening, and also there is a ban on gun sales and ammunition. Meantime, uh, 2,000 National Guardsmen are standing by. Now, one final note, it is important to remember that many, many people in these neighborhoods where the disturbances are taking place are just as upset about the violence as anyone. They are asking for calm. They are asking for an end to the violence. Reporting live from Los Angeles, and she will keep us updated uh, throughout the morning on the very latest developments from there. Los Angeles County is under a state of emergency in the wake of violence spawned by acquittals in the Rodney King beating trial. Now, the latest word from the Los Angeles Police Department is that five people have been killed. Rioters have shot at firemen who have been trying to put out dozens of blazes, and looting is widespread. It's Thursday, April 30th, 1992. World News This Morning continues with Mike Schneider. Good morning to you once again. Our top story this morning comes from Los Angeles following the verdict in the four police officers who were accused in the beating of the motorist Rodney King. They were found not guilty of almost all the charges, and one charge was simply unable to be arrived at in terms of a verdict. That was followed by fires and riots and looting spreading from one neighborhood to another throughout the night there in Los Angeles. There have been deaths, five deaths reported at the latest, and dozens of people have been hospitalized for injuries in the rioting. Black leaders around the country denounced the verdict and also appealed for calm, and the Justice Department now has agreed to pursue a civil rights investigation into the Rodney King beating case. Of course, the reaction to the situation is coming in uh, as we speak. Among those questioning the verdict in the King case is the Democratic presidential candidate, Bill Clinton. Stay with us. the CBS Morning News for Thursday, the 30th of April. Good morning, I'm Meredith Vieira. And I'm Charles Osgood, and here are the top stories. In Los Angeles, fires rage throughout the night after four white policemen are found not guilty of assault in the beating of a black motorist. Five people are killed and scores injured as rioters and looters take to the streets. The governor of California declares a state of emergency and puts National Guard troops on alert. The police officers cleared in the case say justice is served Others around the nation denounced the verdict, and the Justice Department plans a review. The verdict and the violence come 14 months after the videotaped beating of motorist Rodney King stunned the nation. They are calling it the worst night in Los Angeles since the Watts riots of 27 years ago. With the latest on the situation in the streets of Los Angeles, Bill Lagatuda joins us now. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Charles. The fires here continue to burn in Los Angeles. There are reports that five people have now been killed in the rioting and scores have been injured. A citywide emergency has been declared. It was the first indication it would be a long, ugly night. A white man who was dragged from the cab of his truck and beaten mercilessly by a group of black men. The victim did nothing except drive into South Central Los Angeles. here that angry crowds soon began throwing rocks, breaking into stores, and setting fires. We had a lot of trouble, dude. A lot of trouble. These people are angry. They have every right to be. By nightfall, dozens of buildings were burning. Firemen could not get to most of them for fear they would be attacked. When one crew tried, a fireman was shot and wounded. There was so much smoke over the city that planes landing at L.A.'s airport had to shift directions. 
At the city's police headquarters, a crowd of several hundred people, furious at the verdicts, tried to rush the building. They taunted patrolmen who stood shoulder to shoulder in riot gear. Unable to provoke the officers, the mob then set off through the city's downtown section, trying to torch other government buildings and breaking glass. An exhausted-looking mayor, Tom Bradley, went on TV and declared a curfew. Other city leaders compared the looting and the fires to the Watts riots of 1965. California's Governor Pete Wilson went on television earlier this morning and said that he would make the National Guard available to help restore order if needed. He said they could be in Los Angeles and on the streets by as early as later this morning. Charles? Thank you, Bill. Bill, I get to it in Los Angeles. Ready? Community leaders in Los Angeles tried to keep a lid on the anger last night, but peacekeeping proved risky. Cindy Kennard joins us from Los Angeles with that story. Cindy? Well, good morning, Meredith. We are at the County Criminal Courts building in downtown Los Angeles, where an anxious, roving crowd of about 300 smashed windows here overnight after the verdict was read. Now, at the same time, across the city, community leaders gathered in a church in an event that was designed to head off this type of violence and disturbance, and it had been an event that had been planned for weeks. Thousands flocked to the oldest black church in Los Angeles, seeking refuge from the pain and anger, and hoping community leaders could explain a jury verdict that seemed beyond belief. That we've been the victims of police brutality for in this Joe, time, but you... we know they're guilty. Yeah. Well, not only is this an insult to the black race, it is an insult to the human race. Los Angeles, thank you. A night of rage in Los Angeles after four police officers accused of beating a black motorist are acquitted of criminal charges. Good morning, America. I'm Joan London. And I'm Charles Gibson. This morning in Washington, D.C., it is Thursday, April 30th, and we devote most of the broadcast this morning to the Rodney King case. Joan? California's governor has declared a state of emergency for Los Angeles to curb the violence that broke out after a nearly all-white jury acquitted four police officers charged in the videotaped beating of Rodney King. Let's get right to Mike Schneider, who's standing by with the news of the day. Mike. Thank you, Charlie. Good morning, everyone. We have been watching parts of Los Angeles burn overnight, stores being looted in Los Angeles, motorists actually being pulled from their cars and, in some cases, beaten all a reaction to the verdicts in the Rodney King case. There are parts of Los Angeles right now, the trouble parts, the shaded area of your screen there, that are now under a dusk to dawn curfew as police, aided by the National Guard, which has been called out now, try to restore order to a very troubled section of America's second largest city. The trouble started shortly after a jury found four Los Angeles policemen not guilty of criminal charges in the beating of Rodney King. A state of emergency was declared by authorities as more than 150 fires burned in Los Angeles and the looting and rioting continued through the night. In several cases, motorists were dragged from their cars and beaten. Some witnesses say the rioters cheered and raised their arms in victory as a truck driver was attacked and sent to the hospital in critical condition. More than 100 other people were also injured in the violence. Several died as anger over the King verdict swept through the black community. Early on in the evening, community leaders fervently called for restraint, saying violence would not change the verdict. But by midnight, the governor was calling out the National Guard. This is a matter that needs to be settled in the courts and not in the streets. We slowly will get it under control, but I think there's a lot of uh, work to be done before it is under control. Well, hours left in this night on the West Coast, so the violence is not over yet, Mike. Tom, at this point, what are they doing about the fires? Are firefighters getting anywhere near these blazes, or are they in some cases just content to sit back and let themselves burn? They're having a little more luck now because the police have largely been involved in trying to protect the firefighters while they move in and try to do this work. One firefighter was shot in the face earlier tonight. Um, and he was taken to a hospital for treatment. Uh, they're doing a little bit better at that. More than that, the police seem to be doing a, a better job of trying to keep some of the blazes from being set now. So at least they're dealing with, with a number of blazes that do not seem to be growing as rapidly as they were at one point in the night. Uh, one also, from looking at the video, could get a sense sometime that everybody in these neighborhoods is rioting, and we know that's not the case. Are we getting feedback from some of the other residents, how they're coping with this and what their reaction is to the violence around them? 
There's not a lot of feedback at this point, Mike, because a lot of people are not coming outside, and, and it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and a lot of people don't want to be outside. It's uh, later than that now. It's 4 o'clock here at this hour, and a lot of people are simply staying away from the violence, trying to avoid it. There's not a lot of reaction from the street simply because of that. The people who are on the street are either trying to stop the violence or are part of it in great part. Now, the jury in this case, and this is one of the key factors for the outrage here, the jury in this case, which cleared the police officers, had no blacks on it. There was one Asian, there was one Hispanic, but the rest of the people were just white people. There were no black people there. One juror did talk later with ABC's Ted Koppel, the condition here that the person would not be identified in any way. That juror said that King could have stopped the beating at any time by simply raising his hands. The juror said the jury believed the policemen were justified in fearing that King was an out-of-control person and potentially violent. ABC's Tom Schell now has more on the verdict. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant not guilty of the crime. The jury's decision was the same on 10 of the 11 charges against the four police officers. In each case, it was not guilty. As court adjourned, attorneys, defendants, and family members exchanged hugs of celebration. Outside the courtroom, Deputy District Attorney Terry White commented. Well, my reaction is uh, shock first and then disappointment. Obviously, we feel the uh, evidence warranted a conviction on uh, the defendants, and uh, the jury disagreed with us, and we must uh, abide by their decision. Attorney Stephen Lerman, who represents Rodney King, was outraged at the verdict. Any right-thinking uh, normal person that, that sees that videotape and, and has experienced the, 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 the shock and, 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 and viciousness of this event uh, can't, can't sit with this, uh, this verdict as being the final. Not guilty of the crime of assault by force likely to produce great bodily injury with a deadly weapon. In Los Angeles, the deadly aftermath of the Rodney King verdict, violence, arson, and anguished cries. A disgrace. This don't make no sense. It's not going to do no better. It's going to make it worse. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, April 30th. I'm Paula Zahn. And I'm Harry Smith. Good morning and welcome to CBS This Morning. We're going to bring you the latest developments from Los Angeles. Now for this morning's news, tensions exploded overnight on the streets of Los Angeles following the acquittal of four police officers charged in the beating of Rodney King. The city is under a state of emergency this morning after a night of fires, looting, and violence. At least five people are dead, more than a hundred. Back now, 8 o'clock on a Thursday morning, the last morning of April of 92, is a morning of violence in the streets of Los Angeles following the acquittal of four white police officers and the beating of a black motorist. We're back in Studio 3B for a second hour of today. Uh, along with Katie Couric, I'm Brian Gubber. We'll go to Faith Daniels for the news desk. Faith? Thank you, Brian. Well, certainly, as you've been hearing, the violence is continuing on the streets of Los Angeles this morning. It all follows the acquittal Wednesday of four policemen accused of beating motorist Rodney King. At least eight people are dead and scores of buildings are on fire. George Lewis has been following the story right through the night, and he is with us again from Los Angeles. George? Good morning, Faith. The skies of Los Angeles are black with smoke from at least 150 fires deliberately set. Uh, mobs went on a rampage, mostly in the black neighborhoods of South Central Los Angeles, and a state of emergency remains in effect. It was a long, violent night in South Central Los Angeles. Scores of fires set by angry mobs in spite of a call for calm from elected officials and religious leaders in the black community. Okay. One of the motorists later died. Another was saved by this man, a good Samaritan, who pulled the victim to safety. I mean, this whole thing, from the beginning, it's been a human issue with Rodney King. He's a human being. That was the problem. A human being was abused. This gentleman, this Asian gentleman tonight, is a human issue. This is not a racial issue. You know, but it's hard for people to see past those things. It's hard for me to see past them sometimes. There were so many blazes, the fire department couldn't respond to all the calls and just let some buildings burn to the ground. Firemen reported people were shooting at them, and at least two firefighters were wounded. It's sad that we have to pass some incidents because we're prioritized for other ones. The department says at this hour, between 30 and 40 fires are burning. They say as soon as they put one out, somebody sets one in another place. Faith? All right, very disturbing. Thank you, George Lewis. There is certainly shock and disbelief to the verdict and to the violence in Los Angeles all across the country. There are calls for President Bush to do something about it. Jim McLeshevsky is at the White House this morning. Jim? Good morning, Faith. Uh, White House officials are scrambling at this very moment 
uh, to produce a statement from President Bush concerning this situation. We should get that momentarily. I can tell you that the president has been following this very closely this morning. He's seen some of that disturbing video out of Los Angeles. Now, last night, the president's initial reaction was one of caution. He claimed that they'd have to pick it up again. You cannot ignore that all of this is coming in a presidential election year. What are the ram political ramifications for George Bush? Well, you know, there's, some, there's a lot of frustration here at the White House. Nobody expected that verdict the way it came down. There's nothing really that the White House can do about that verdict, but it does present a huge political problem. Many civil rights leaders thought that President Bush has been weak on civil rights, civil rights promises. They're looking for him now for some leadership on this issue and quickly. All right, thank you, Jim McLeishevsky. We've been prepared for a riot like this, but everybody has been talking in my neighborhood and around me about something like the West Riot happening again. The city of Angels ignites in anger and violence after the verdicts in the Rodney King beating case are heard. Angry mobs take to the streets, setting fires, looting stores, in some cases dragging people from cars, as the words not guilty echo across the city. As of this hour, a state of emergency is in effect. The National Guard is standing by, and the city is slapped with a dusk-to-dawn curfew. Good morning and welcome to CNN Morning News. I'm Bob Kang. Hello, I'm Donna Kelly. Those emergency measures became the law of the land overnight after appeals for calm from Governor Pete Wilson and Mayor Tom Bradley failed to work. As it's described now, some uneasy calm that grips the streets of Los Angeles after a night of rioting left at least eight people dead, more than 100 hurt. Firefighters needed police protection from snipers. One firefighter is in very serious condition after being shot is in place for all of Los Angeles County. There were reports of rioters dragging motorists from their vehicles and beating them. A witness to one beating helped get a trucker to the nearest hospital. I saw him uh, again being beat when he uh, approached the intersection of Normandy and Florence. And I seen exactly what transpired during the whole course of his, his being beaten. He actually crawled up into the truck and made it two blocks down before I actually started helping out. So next thing you know, when he finally got up into the truck and made it two blocks, then I was one of the guys who helped him further on into the truck, and we helped drive the truck all the way back here to Daniel Freeman Hospital. I, I feel bad, again, because you find bad in, in, in all races, don't get me wrong, but I just really feel that this man didn't have, he didn't have a chance, and I really don't feel that he was part of that, that, that bad scene. And reporter Ann McDermott has been with them for the past couple of hours. She joins us now live with an update on the situation. Ann? Well, just a few minutes ago, Los Angeles Police Chief Daryl Gates held an impromptu press conference, and he told reporters that things seem to be relatively calm right now. Yes, there are still some fires burning, but security for the firefighters is no longer an issue. There are still some isolated pockets of violence, and occasionally here in the background, we do hear the sound of gunfire. And there is occasional looting, even at this hour, according to the chief of police. Uh, most of these are done, the looting is being done by young people, we are told. People are confirmed numbers for us. We are getting eight dead and perhaps as many as 150 injured. That is the same figures I have, eight dead and uh, uh, close to 150 uh, wounded. Uh. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, gorgeous day here in Manhattan, uh, Thursday, April 30th, 1992, just the way a spring day should be, although they say some rain later tonight. Last day of April, huh? Yeah. Tomorrow? Tomorrow's May. May Day. May Day, right. Well, uh, I wonder what the communists will be doing. <laughs> Is there a parade this year? I don't know. It's going to no, no more parades, huh? I guess not. Well, the big story, of course, all around the country, everybody's talking about it, and it came in last night. The jury a verdict in, um, in uh, Simi Valley, uh, just north of Los Angeles, was not guilty for uh, the uh, four police officers charged with uh, excessive force. I guess these uh, headlines here in New York will uh, tell the whole story. There's Newsday, cops not guilty. Uh, Post says uh, L.A. jury must have been blind. And the Daily News simply says, um, rage. And there was a lot of rage last night. If you watched the TV, you saw those fires going up. And I felt so sorry for this poor guy caught right here. Apparently, I think, from what I could put together, was a radio reporter who was dragged from his car and was continually pelted with who knows, cans or whatever and really uh, took a pretty bad beating. I mean, you talk oh, about excessive way. force. That was excessive <laughs> force right there. And I maybe, uh, from what I hear, Fires are still burning, and uh, some people are, are dead. You're kidding. That's what I hear, right? Eight. Eight oh, people killed in this so far.
If you uh, lived through the Watts riots in Los Angeles, as I did, you remember them well. I mean, they stay with you for the rest of your life. And, and what a tragedy uh, that uh, it has to happen at all in the first place. Because once those buildings get burned down, they remain empty, vacant lots, you know, for years, for 10, 15 years, before anybody rebuilds back on them. And the people who have to live there have to live uh, with all of that. But the, but the verdict surely stunned everybody. I think it did, yeah. yeah. And there, even the police force out there in Los Angeles is saying there are no winners, so there's not a sense of jubilation yeah. there. I mean, what are you going to do? I hate to see those helicopter shots swooping around the city late at night with those fires springing up everywhere. Wouldn't it's you have liked to have spoken to the jurors? I guess Ted Koppel got one of the only interviews. Oh, with, did he? That's what I read in the paper oh, today. Yeah? Uh, spoke to a, a juror for 20 minutes who wanted to remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. and. I guess there's all kinds of legal entanglements and things. I mean, yeah. it's, it's so, uh, the, the judicial system is just so out of whack now. Y you know that that uh, trial began when we were in Los Angeles, which was, what, the end of February, the beginning, beginning of, of March. March. So here it is the end of April. I mean, it was two months long and a very complicated trial that turned out to be. Fires are still burning in Los Angeles today in violent reaction to yesterday's acquittal of three white police officers who were videotaped beating a black motorist in March of 1991. No one predicted the level of arson, violence, and mayhem the verdict would spark. Hundreds of structures in South Central Los Angeles were torched and firefighters were attacked, some with axes when they tried to put out the fires. President Bush Bush met with his attorney general today and announced some steps he's taking to put out the flames of discontent. When the sun came up this morning, there were 40 fires still burning. Exhausted firefighters just changed shifts a short time ago. There are still reports of new fires, uh, looting and sniper fire on the streets. At least nine people have been killed, 138 injured. Many were randomly shot and stabbed. Others were dragged from their cars and beaten. Leaders from President Bush to Mayor Tom Bradley are deploring the violence. The police chief says he's calling up some 2,000 National Guard units to try and keep the peace tonight. Mayor Bradley says he's outraged the officers who beat King were let off, but he's urging citizens to vent their anger verbally and not through violent acts. We're talking about we'll shoot you, let the fire burn. It's an idiotic, very idiotic thing to burn up your own neighborhood. Inflamed passions ignite an explosion of violence. The city of Los Angeles, a city burning with rage. The violence evokes memories of another time of racial unrest. The 1965 Watts riots were visited. Early Prime continues. I'm Lou Waters. And I'm Cheryl Atkinson. Here's the latest on the volatile situation in L.A. A dusk to dawn curfew is being extended to the entire city of Los Angeles. The curfew goes into effect in about four and a half hours. In the words of L.A. Police Chief Daryl Gates, I believe it's absolutely essential to shut down well, things after right. sundown. Channel 10's Dennis Waltering is live in Los Angeles right now with the latest. Dennis? Hi, Diane Arthur. I'm standing outside the Parker Center, the police headquarters, where protesters tore up shrubs, broke windows, and had a standoff with police last night. You might be able to see police are scattered outside the buildings right now, and over this way, you might be able to see where the two-block section of the area has been barricaded. This part of the town is peaceful right now, but Los Angeles has a state of emergency. At least 13 people have been killed in rioting overnight. Close to 200 have been injured. Looting continues in some parts of town. Earlier, we saw scenes like these of people breaking into stores and running out with whatever they wanted. And part of the city's on fire. The city counted at least 1,500 arsons since last night. Some fires continue burning out of control. Meantime, downtown L.A. is shutting down early. Mayor Tom Bradley has ordered a curfew from dark until dawn, and a lot of people are leaving work early. It's only 2.30 right now here in California. Authorities are bracing for more rioting tonight. And Arthur, as you mentioned, the National Guard has been called in. The National Guard was ordered to staging areas earlier today, and we are now hearing that the National Guard is being mobilized into the streets of Los Angeles. Tonight, no one will be allowed on the streets unless they can prove they have legitimate business to police or to National Guardsmen. At the moment, L.A. is tense and nervous, trying to put the lid back on after an explosion that continues out of control. In Los Angeles, Dennis Woltering, Channel 10 News. And I update what we had. 450 people now have been injured. 300 have been arrested. In Atlanta, Georgia, meanwhile, a peaceful protest over the King verdict ended in violence and looting.
They're picking his pockets now. I, okay, I think we just took a round. Now, as you heard there, the reporter mentions a round. Well, that's a round of gunfire. The mob then turns its anger on the media, the helicopter there. But there are other victims as well tonight, the homeowners and the business owners of South Central L.A. What the looters didn't get, the massive fires did. But as those flames lit up the night, there was hope as people trying to help people each other. People climbed in the windows and beat him in the face with beer bottles. He was knocked unconscious. He had severe lacerations all over his face. And I was able to get through the crowd and uh, drag him out. Police say nearly a half dozen people were pulled from their cars or their trucks and attacked by the mobs. Well, when he takes over as police chief out there, Philadelphia's Commissioner Willie Williams will inherit all of the problems he that will be coming with that last night was one of the job. most frightening of their lives. Action News caught up with several people from L.A. as they flew into Philadelphia International Airport today. Former Cheltenham resident Jonathan Bell, who now lives in West Hollywood, says the fires were visible about two miles away from his house. Where I live is Sunset Strip, and it's normally very happening that time of night. Lots of people out having a good time. It was almost eerily quiet. Not many people on the streets at all. People seemed to be staying inside. Bell was frightened by the situation, as were many of the other people on the plane with him. Michael Luster has a personal interest in the trouble. He lives in South Central L.A. He watched those stores burn last night. What happened to those white people who were getting beat up? But I hold that jury responsible. At WHAT Radio, host Mary Mason fielded scores of calls from members of the black community, angered by the verdict, it is open war against black folks. shocked by the violence that followed. We need to love and respect one another. We need to stop killing. But the question being asked today, did the riots in Los Angeles justify the outcome of the trial? That's where the opinions differed on the streets of Center City. Some couldn't understand why an outraged community could retaliate against innocent people. From newspaper headlines to President Bush on TV urging for peace. Many of the people we talked to today suspect that the riots in Los Angeles probably would have occurred even if the four police officers had been convicted instead of acquitted and that the people responsible for the violence and the vandalism there were simply looking for an excuse to cause trouble. They ain't number thieves and thugs. They're just knocking out black folks' places. That's all they're doing. And so the debate I'm continues, as place does place the search for answers on how to ease the tensions in L.A. So and how to prevent a ripple effect of urban unrest in other cities like Philadelphia. Rick Williams, Channel 6, Action News. In some way. And that is the Los Angeles story to the minute. <laughs> Appeals for calm, expressions of rage as widespread rioting erupts in Los Angeles and demonstrations are held across the country. What now? And we'll take a closer look at the videotape so central to the Rodney King beating trial that sparked all this. Frame by frame, you be the jury. What would you have done? <laughs> This is The World Today with Katherine Cryer and Frank Sasno. Thanks for joining us. We begin in Los Angeles, where the city is reeling today from the aftershocks of violent human upheaval. Here's the latest as far as we know it. L.A. County Coroner's Office confirms 14 riot-related deaths now. There may be 500 injured. Hundreds more have been arrested. Some 2,000 National Guardsmen have been mobilized. Stores and banks have been closed. From the ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. This has been a day on which people all over the country have been using words and phrases such such as outrage, powerlessness, wanton violence and hopelessness, anger, frustration, betrayal and racism. Some Americans were completely shocked at the verdict in the Rodney King case and the violence which followed. At least nine people dead, more than 400 injured, nearly a thousand in jail. Other people are just as shaken by all this, but not necessarily shocked. For the situation in Los Angeles is this at the moment. The National Guard has been called out. The entire city has been put under curfew. Not just that hundred square mile area in the middle of this vast city where so much of the violence was last night. That's our report on World News Tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. Good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. I don't see why we're burning ourselves down. <laughs> We're seeing a dark day here in Los Angeles. The vengeance after the verdict. Cries for justice. 
pleas for peace amid the rage in Los Angeles. This is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather reporting. Good evening. 2,000 National Guardsmen are in Los Angeles tonight in case they're needed to keep order. In violence following the Rodney King verdict, at least 10 people have been killed, about 200 injured, and there have been 300 arrests. Property damage, $100 million and counting up. Our coverage begins with Bill Lagatuta in Los Angeles. Bill? Dan, busloads of National Guardsmen are arriving at staging areas in Los Angeles. It's expected they will be in some of the neighborhoods later tonight, and they're getting here just in time. Behind me, that thick gray-black cloud is smoke from new fires, which are popping up constantly in the southern section of the city. Everybody here expected some turmoil following yesterday's surprise courtroom verdicts, but no one imagined the kind of violent orgy that took place in the streets here overnight. Dan Rather, I'll see you again soon with Ed Bradley on Street Stories. CBS News. The people of CBS News. Dan Rather. Connie Chung. Mike Wallace. Ed Bradley. Leslie Stahl. And Charles Corral. Experience. CBS News. This is under curfew tonight as violence continues in the streets. President Bush condemns that violence and promises a federal investigation of the King case. And protests spill over to Atlanta as well. This is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Reporting tonight from NBC News headquarters in New York. Good evening. Los Angeles is a city on edge tonight and under curfew as fires, looting, and street violence continue. A lawless reaction to the acquittal of four white police officers in the beating of black motorist Rodney King. National Guardsmen now are being deployed to neighborhoods not yet under assault. Most of the fires and violence have been confined to the predominantly black neighborhoods of South Central Los Angeles. That's Nightly News for now. I'm Tom Brokaw. We'll have continuing coverage of these developments throughout the evening on this NBC station. The sights and sounds of last night's L.A. riots sent shockwaves around the world. British networks spent hours covering the violence, and newsman William Neely says the English interest is understandable. I think Europe, like America, is stunned at the verdict. I think in the editorials in tomorrow's newspapers, you are going to see that kind of thing reflected. De Los Angeles qui s'enflamme. So far from local news, the Los Angeles melee also dominated Parisian airwaves. From the snippets of news that aired, it seemed all of Los Angeles was ablaze, according to Alain de Chevron of France's Channel 2. I have been told by a correspondent in, in Los Angeles that uh, Quarters like uh, Venice or even Beverly Hills were touched by the violence. As far away as Japan, the outcome of the Rodney King case was top news of the day. Back home, last night's violence was all anyone was talking about on all the networks. CNN spent most of its morning news rehashing the destruction, and all three major morning shows devoted most of their airtime to showing America a city under siege. Soon after, viewers saw live pictures of motorists being pulled from their vehicles and beaten senseless. Those pictures of those men being beaten and pulled, pulled out of their cars and being beaten were so upsetting it almost made you sick. But for the local reporters who spent last night in the middle of the madness, keeping things in perspective was a priority. Los Angeles stations were quick to contrast the violence with simultaneous peaceful demonstrations just blocks away. We may continue to watch the fire and listen to Rita Walters. Those attitudes that gave rise to that are still there. Aerial helicopter shots gave viewers a clear look at the scope of the fires and looting. But local NBC reporter Diane Diaz says staying objective wasn't always easy. Perhaps it is easy to exaggerate, but what's exaggeration when you have this kind of devastation all around you? You see another one burning right across the street, a looted building over there, another fire in the desert. By morning light, tourists didn't seem scared off by the pictures saturating the airways. Now let's find out what's happening at this hour in Los Angeles. Sam? Diane, there are many, many fires burning in central Los Angeles tonight, and there are new ones being set constantly. The fire department simply can't cope. 
There's a lot of looting going on, and now it's spread even to the heart of Hollywood, according to reports. And although the police and National Guard are on the streets, most of the looters appear to be getting away with it. But not all. Watch this. Extraordinary uh, pictures from earlier this evening when some Korean merchants came out of their shops and began to fire at looters. We don't know whether anyone was hit, but they took matters into their own hands. We have reports of uh, looting having spread up the coast to San Francisco in Market Square. And here in Los Angeles, it's really spreading too. More on this, of course, on Nightline later this evening. Diane? So that's it for us tonight. 2020 will be here tomorrow night. Glad you joined us. I'm Diane Sawyer in New York. Good night, Sam. Good night, Diane. I'm Sam Donaldson in Los Angeles. Join us again next Thursday evening for another edition of Primetime Live. Primetime is a presentation of ABC News. The fires of anger lit in Los Angeles. With the heat felt in Washington. Lootings, beatings, and random violence against innocent victims must be condemned. Today, signs of spreading unrest. Tonight, in the nation's second largest city, a curfew in a wounded community and a larger examination of what is tearing it apart. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ed Koppel. Of national attention, though, remains Los Angeles. Here's a late report from Judy Muller. At the violence was on the rise. Firefighters, often the targets of violence themselves, could not keep up with the arson fires. National Guard troops were deployed in the troubled areas to reinforce the police. But even all that law enforcement didn't stop the looting or the vigilante attempts to stop the looting. These Korean shop owners defended their property with bullets. More than 100 Korean businesses have been looted or burned since last night. We have a lot of shotguns in here and some handguns, but we have to use them because, I mean, we have to defend our lives, we have to defend our property. You know, people out there watching, you know, please just don't sit there and enjoy this um, great you know, exhibition. It's not entertainment, you know. you know. It's not a Hollywood action shot. In anticipation of more trouble, high-rise office buildings downtown were evacuated as commuters packed the roads in an effort to get home early. Grocery stores were also okay, packed coming. as residents okay, sought to 10, stockpile 9, 8, goods. 7, 6, All 5, schools 4, are closed 2, and have canceled weekend activities. 1, 2, 3, 4, Shopping 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, over the city closed down out of fear that the violence and looting would spread. Most of the trouble is taking place within a 105 square mile area of South Central LA. But there are reports now of looting in Beverly Hills, Hollywood, and several locations in the San Fernando Valley. In South Central, the looting has become brazen. There seems little connection to outrage over the King verdict. Most of the looters, like these seen breaking into a Sears store, seem to be making the most of a chaotic situation to grab some goods. In fact, one looter arrived at this location in a yellow cab. At a nearby grocery store, a local reporter confronted some of the thieves. Why did you do this? I don't know, because it's free. And it's free? Yeah. Don't you know it's wrong? Nah. You don't care? Okay. You know the thieves, how come they let that happen to the place? Why didn't they guard? Y'all running out of there with the food? I, I, don't, I gotta do some shopping. I don't have any food in the house. At dusk, all bus and rail service was canceled. Air traffic into Los Angeles International Airport has been backed up and a number of planes have been diverted. And the smaller Santa Monica Airport has been closed because of smoke from a major fire in West Los Angeles. Mayor Tom Bradley says it is imperative that the violence be contained. In a day of sad news, a particularly sad item this evening. The truck driver who was pulled from his truck yesterday and beaten has died from his injuries. And coming under fire from looters. Arson fires continue to burn with throughout the city. Since this all began, more than three dozen fires have been set. One bit of encouraging news, since the curfew began at dusk, the streets seem to have emptied. Ted? Judy CBS Muller, News correspondent Bob Fa is in Los Angeles with the very latest. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Monica. The curfew has been in effect now for about four and a half hours. It has slowed the rate of violence and arson, but the grim numbers continue to climb. 24 now reported dead, nearly 800 injured, about 400 arrests, and millions of people 
confined to their homes, could only watch as a major city was torched. Throughout the night, Los Angeles burned. Well over 1,200 fires reported, stores, banks, restaurants. Breaking out so often, firemen were so busy fighting one fire, they literally could not get to others. Like this shopping center, which burned to the ground. Everybody ready? Let's fall out and do it. First squad, let's go. 4,000 National Guardsmen fully armed were deployed, but 12 hours later than scheduled because they couldn't get ammunition. As they waited, crime flourished. Looting was reported throughout the area as swarms of people literally flooded into stores, walking out as ransacked. Occasionally on Hollywood Boulevard, where the stars are, arrests were made, black, white, male, female. But this night, the police presence often seemed too little, too late. As order broke down, citizens tried to do what they could, help firefighters man pumps, or tried to protect their own possessions. As one local politician put it, the system has broken down and people are helping to mend it. Most, though, could only watch in horror. The city wants another 2,000 National Guardsmen brought in by noon on Friday. The president has been told that federal troops may be needed. All right, coming up next, we'll tell you about the violence hitting other cities. <laughs> Looters smashed storefronts on Telegraph Avenue, and in San Francisco, Mayor Frank Jordan has imposed a curfew. CNN's Greg Lefebvre has details on the situation there. Like the anti-war protests of a year ago, this rapidly descended into roving bands of rioters and looters. Perhaps taking a cue from the uninhibited looting seen in Los Angeles, about 200 to 500 demonstrators marched and smashed their way across San Francisco's elite Knob Hill into the city's posh retail district, Union Square. I just got DF by about 15 black guys. Stole my camera. What'd they take? Anything and everything. Cleaned it out from A to Z. The day opened with angry but peaceful demonstrations at campuses around the Bay Area. Then some of the demonstrators who rallied at UC Berkeley marched several miles onto the Oakland Bay Bridge, snarling traffic. They were arrested and the bridge reopened. At nightfall, looters broke windows and took merchandise along Berkeley's retail street, Telegraph Avenue. The San Francisco march started in the city's mostly minority mission district, spilled into San Francisco's main commercial district, and then blew up into violence, destruction, and arrests. I didn't do anything! I was just running! Looters broke into a locked Macy's store and took clothing, shoes, and jackets. Others took jewelry, cameras, and electronic items from the many stores that catered to tourists and out-of-town shoppers. San Francisco called in all off-duty officers, extended shifts of those on duty, and called for mutual aid from three neighboring counties. Station for tolerance of free speech and expression, it was clear that demonstrators virtually had the roam of the streets. But then around sunset, the demonstrators quit, and police say the rioters took over. Greg Lefebvre, CNN, San Francisco. Downtown Atlanta is quiet at this hour, but it remains under a curfew after a day of violence related to the Rodney King verdict. Promoting violence in Los Angeles and other news when CNN Overnight continues. And, uh, and just really a flurry of activity that seems to be uh, absent right now. And uh, maybe that does bode well for uh, what the chief of police and the mayor and the, uh, the governor discussed earlier, namely that perhaps the curfew is having some kind of a positive effect. It just does seem a little bit quieter. And again, my colleagues seem to be echoing that sentiment from around the city.
Mike and Bree. Uh, Harvey, uh, of course, we know there was the one officer involved shooting a bit earlier tonight. We saw footage of the uh, 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 man who was shot. Uh, have you heard of any other shootings involving officers? No. Uh, in fact, the, uh, that was the only one that I heard of. And yeah, there's, the th th there, there's a lot of, uh, of circular discussions going on here that they, that they rob stores where they get more weapons, which allow them to rob more stores. Activity, actually. The, most of the fires seem to be smoldering and nothing really burning that heavily. Uh, so things are definitely calming down uh, as time goes by tonight. Well, let's just uh, let's just drink in this uh, this uh, picture of relative uh, serenity and peacefulness, at least from your vantage point. It certainly is a a contrast, uh, the antithesis of what we saw last night, Mike. That's our feeling. How about yours? Oh, that's definitely the case, Paul. Last night, uh, things were really going crazy, and then it seemed like it. As I watched TV earlier when I was uh, resting today, it was uh, things were really picking up and getting much worse. And it seems like as we get later in the evenings, things are uh, calming down. And this is by far the most quiet. Welcome, welcome news. It sure looks good. Uh, do you see any areas of black out of, from where you are right now? We may not be in the right spot in town to notice if there's any power outages, but do uh, you notice anything from here? Uh, yes, and there are several areas of power outage. Right now, we're just over Capitol Records now. And to our south, I could spot at least three areas that have... Uh, four or five square block area that uh, have power outages. So Television. How about these scenes of relative peace and calm, Dr. Butterworth? Is that having, uh, what kind of effect is that having on our viewers right now? It's just what the doctor ordered. I mean, this is the best thing we could see. It's giving people hope. They're, they're getting us and that is the ongoing coverage of um, KABC in Los Angeles. And that last shot, the one you're looking at now, a shot of Los Angeles that is not burning, but a difference from 24 hours ago. But that is the scene now. You're breaking up a little bit. Can you give us the location? This is, uh, this is Willie... Excuse me, Bree. This is Willow Street in Long Beach. We're not exactly sure of the cross. Mm -hmm. And now we've lost well, you. We've lost that shot. Okay. Uh, Obviously, Long Beach has taken its share of uh, problems uh, tonight, and this is just the latest. I, I'm told now it's back. Uh, right. It's on Willow Street in, uh, in Long Beach. Do you know what kind of building that is, Gary? Uh, it appears to be a large variety store, perhaps a furniture store, something of that nature. And uh, as you can see, uh, character... That is photographer Gary Johnson, who you see talking with anchors Michael Tuck and Bree Walker at KCBS-TV in Los Angeles, where it is now coming up on 1 a.m. And we'll be back with more. This is CBS News, up to the minute. up this half hour of CBS News up to the minute. We're keeping a close eye on the Los Angeles situation. Stay tuned to the CBS television station to keep you posted throughout the day. We're glad you're with us. This is CBS News up to the minute. New York, I'm Lisa McCree. And I'm Aaron Brown. And in the news at this hour, the rage over the Rodney King verdict that filled South Central Los Angeles is spreading now to other parts of that city, to other parts of the country. It is the dominant story. The death toll now in Los Angeles is at least 24. Curfews remain in effect in Los Angeles and in San Francisco and in Atlanta and in Las Vegas. 